about startups going, you know, two and a half times, and some of that push came from the government's em uh, emphasis on right. the larger picture. And there's a palpable energy in the country today, right. uh, as you know, that the country is heading in a different direction. It's almost you know, an inflection point in its growth story. Um, IIT Madras has been a, a key element of that whole growth for the last 60 years. What do you see? Let's talk a little bit about the India that is being reimagined and, and followed by what IITM's reimagined re role could be. See, startups are very important and that's why the government, right from the PM, have realized it. Because they not only represent at the very basic level new, uh, new wealth generation, new employment, and new uh, creation of uh, national capacity. But actually, they are, they are uh, the vehicle through which we go back to our, reconnect with our uh, confident past, sure. in some sense, okay? And, um, but it's not an easy path to uh, hew out because uh, you can create the startup. Uh, and that's the first step. There's no point talking about all the challenges ahead of startups before even creating them. If you don't have startups, you don't have any challenges, okay? Yeah. So as last count, since the government officially had a very proactive startup policy that I just saw in the media, there are almost 20,000 startups in the country, okay? But obviously, you, you know, you dig around, you're going to find that, the, that these startups have many challenges. That in India, it's, it's, not, it's not a, the startup ecosystem is not a going concern in some sense, uh, you know. Yes, in, everywhere in the world, a lot of startups fail, but uh, in India, probably, um, it's not that easy for a startup to succeed. There are many other gaps in uh, capacity, in the ecosystem, and so on. So again, it's I think the role of the IITs in particular to see those early and start fixing them so that the rest of the country and the rest of the ecosystem can benefit from that. Okay. So we at IIT are now very focused on not just creating new startups, but actually watching very carefully how they are developing, what is coming in their way, where are the gaps in capacity, and alumni play a very important role in this. What kind of mentoring do they need? Uh, how do they get it? Uh, how do we make sure you get the right kind of mentoring? How do we? How do startups? Uh, the Gopal Krishna Deshpande Center is actually uh, primarily it's a pre-startup uh, uh, sort of a facility, uh, you know, ca capacity building where you say, okay, how do you get people who are thinking of a startup based on some idea that they have? How do they actually assess what will work and what won't work in the market? So, how do they go about this? Yes. So, I think we are looking at those kinds of things, yeah. not just counting startups. Yeah. Okay, I, but I think it's very important for the country to count startups because we, I, you know. You don't have, just like somebody told us, you know, telling us uh, very long ago, you know, when somebody said, oh, we must do research, but we must do very good research, we first start doing your research, then you worry about how good it is, right? So I think it's very important to, to get the startups going and uh, get their feet wet and, you know, start doing, getting into the trenches. Then simultaneously, don't assume that everything is hunky-dory after that, but start fixing all these things. And I think then as the percentage of uh, successful startups uh, reaches the norm elsewhere in the world, I think the benefits to the country will be immense. India is being reimagined as to what its position is, both within to look at itself in a mirror and globally. And uh, what do you see IITM's reimagined role would be going forward? What do you see a reimagined IITM to look like? See, the IITs, uh, you know, the, the original uh, committee uh, report on which the IITs were created, I think, uh, is an incredible report in the sense that it got the overall objectives back. It didn't matter that it was in 1940. You know, it just said that you have to be at the middle center of the, of whatever is important that has to be done in India, right? Which means this reimagining, whatever you call it, rediscovery of the, reconnecting with our confidence, uh, make, taking our future into our hands, making sure we get to the point where we want to be. We don't, we want to be in a, straight away we want to be in a point where we're leading a sustainable, uh, you know, uh, going into the future in a sustainable fashion. Uh, that we get the mix of, uh, you know, well-being and uh, wealth generation and, uh, and you know associated costs right that we don't necessarily follow the path that others have taken sure. so this is these are all things that you have to learn how to do and discover for yourself it's not just messed up copying x country or y country you have to do it. and uh, how to get the uh, energy efficiency right how to make sure that we don't we really i mean india is a very fragile in that sense highly populated uh, very small. if you look at all the parameters population density uh, available area available water everything looks very tight but how do you get it right? How do you get it right? How do you get it to the point where it's sustainable and yet your people are actually living well, uh, but not necessarily copying what was done elsewhere? So how do you get this right? And how do you get their their uh, worldview right? How do they get their uh, their own self uh, imagination of what they are right? All this is, and this involves the entire, uh, uh, you know, all the facets of uh, of um, of uh, of a human being, and uh, um, you know. 
I think everything is business of IIT. It's not just technology, or not just engineering. So everything is the business of IIT because we are in the business of, uh, of dealing with people. Uh, though, you know, our focus is the engineering and technology part of what people do. Uh, but I think, I would say, India's business is our business. So, you know, there are many disruptors that appear to be popping up on the horizon to disrupt the whole university ecosystems in the world. You know, one of them is on distance education, online, online courses. I know, you know, we've embraced them. We've, we've used it to our advantage to reach out to industry and the world at large. Where do you see that effort going going forward? See, I think the way we see any new disruptor is what can it do for to accelerate, to strengthen our efforts in meeting this big challenge of getting India to where we want it to be. We don't see, it's a disruptor, of course, in the sense that it may disrupt the comfortable position in which some people are operating in this business. Uh, they may be at that point thinking they are uh, in the business of uh, India's business, but you know, suddenly the things have changed and they have to. But that's not the point. The important point is, how, is it really serving the big purpose? And NPTEL, if it is, NPTEL yeah, is if it, it is, we have, to, we have to take it. So we have, you know, once we realize that this online education is getting to a point, India's broadband network is getting to a point that this can help us, we embraced it. And you know, it has not, uh, it has not, it has only added to what we do. It has not subtracted from anything. Uh, we had to figure out exactly how to, because we've been able to reach out to the other engineering colleges in the country and science institutions in the country in a very big way. We, we were always asked to do that, but earlier our reach, our outreach was always limited to small numbers, not scalable, uh, good but not scalable. But now we are able to do this without uh, hampering any of our core efforts. And uh, certain faculty love this and we have enabled them to do that. Not everybody has to do this. And today, you know, every semester we are uh, addressing a million students uh, across the country, those who are interested in various courses. Uh, they take exams, we certify them. Not all of them do, 12% do, but that's a huge percentage for online programs anywhere in the world. Sure. And they are mediated by the institutions in which they study. This is not, this is not being done on, you know, above their heads or outside of their. These institutions see value in this. They are in the middle of this. We work with them as partners and not as some ivory tower uh, you know, provider. So we have uh, you know, reacted to this and we are reacting to what's becoming available and using this to further our broad goal. But what it means is our faculty have to be constantly agile and change. No faculty member is going to see his or her universe uh, remain anywhere uh, similar to what it was when he or she came into the institute. That is the basic. I think going, I mean the five year trajectory going forward has, a, has you know, a lot of excitement to it. To achieve that in like you said a resource, con resource constrained uh, world with you know like we have all the butterflies buzzing around and the greenery on campus right. being left intact is, is a very exciting uh, path to it. Thank you very much for joining I mean, us. To, to, to give you an example of that, this quadrangle here, many alumni who are watching this will remember this is probably where they came to knick-knack if they, if they are from the 80s. If they are later, there used to be something else. It was called Campus Cafe. So I forget what it was called. Okay, there was a, there was a successor to knick-knack. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I there was Naksha, all kinds of things. And there used to be one dingy go-down nearby which kept filling up to the point where you couldn't open it anymore. And uh, what we have done is actually demolish all of that, built these, this fifth big building on campus, built a well, you know, state-of-the-art food court, built this ambience, which we never had a, a sort of a outdoor plaza type ambience in the campus. We built all this, but if you look at, if you go to Google and look at it, you know, not a big, not a single big tree has been removed. Uh, you know, do it very carefully. So this is really the, uh, the, the what, you know, is it, this is a metaphor for the way IIT Madras wants to engineer change and how it wants to be a part of the change that's happening in the country. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. For Thank you. Thank you much.